Hello everyone, and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this episode, we are going to take a look at BFR from SpaceX, the newest iteration, the 2018 version, and answer a few questions that I had about it. Uh, first of all, whether it can get to the moon uh, on a flyby without refueling, right? Uh, on a single launch without refueling, can it do the flyby of the moon? I just wanted to double check that. Uh, presumably, obviously, they very figured it out, but it's there's no harm in uh, making sure in Kerbal Space Program with its interesting physics uh, whether it's also possible. Uh, practically speaking, I also just wanted to make the front end part, and I need to work on the textures. You can see the windows aren't quite lined up, and I have to figure out transparency and all. But one thing I did do was make it hollow. Uh, so actually, if we go in here. Uh, you can see I've put 12 seats up front, and actually I have Take Command, a mod that lets you uh, put Kerbals in the seats. Uh, so we could do that. And then back here, these are actually two uh, tanks with food, water, and oxygen, so life support tanks there. And we've got uh, 14 days worth of life support for 12 Kerbals. Uh, but yeah, I, I did that so technically the Kerbals should be able to get out of the seats and float around and do stuff though. I would really like there to be windows so that they can look around as well. This is the actual size, it's 9 meters in diameter, so um, it, it's big, but uh, it, it's not as big as uh, you might think it is, uh, you know, if you take a look at the command chair there, but uh, maybe if once we put like rooms in here, uh, it'll, I mean, somehow dividing the space up makes it look more roomy, I guess, maybe. Anyway, as far as the aerodynamics of BFR are concerned, I have no idea. Uh, I've taken it into the SPH, and uh, I've I made as much canards as I could without making it look wrong, but the fact of the matter is that the center mass is far ahead of the center of lift, and I don't see any easy way of counteracting that. Uh, the, the front end is going to be heavy, and the engines are fairly light. Uh, the Raptor engines are not very heavy, so uh, maybe the fins are heavier than I think they are, but we're just going with uh, mass strength multiplier of 1, and we do have la little landing legs. I think these are from stock extensions, so nothing too complicated there, and uh, they, they have their own mass, of course. So, yeah, uh, some of these parts are from the old ITS packs, so uh, these little uh, RCS ports, uh, which uh, burn methane and oxygen, are from Thrim Aerospace, and so are the solar panels, I think, and the grid fins, I don't remember which pack, whether it was KK Launchers or Thrim Aerospace. But anyway, uh, so we've got some parts from those packs, but otherwise it's mostly procedural parts. Like this is a procedural tank that I made the, a sort of BFS texture for, uh, with the gray underside and white top. And, of course, I mentioned this part is just a part I made in Blender, so that's just what that is. It doesn't take too much time to make a cone shape in Blender, though uh, making the colliders is tricky. You see, uh, this is hollow, so it has to have colliders on the outside, but they have to be convex colliders, not concave, so you can't make the whole thing one collider. But, uh, I don't, actually, this is not a surface attachable part. But if you use a surface attachable part, uh, you'll see that the collider I think it took like uh, 37 colliders to uh, manage this, but uh, you can see it's a very nice smooth collider on it uh, for the most part. Okay, so there we have it. Now, I have to, I, I'm here in the VAB. Normally, I, I've sort of switched to doing most of my talk during launches, but that's unavoidable in this case because it's going to be loud and laggy, the launch, because we've got 31 engines at the bottom of the BFR. and yeah, they they don't play nice with the frame rates. I wish I could make an SSTU part for all of these engines, but trying to figure out the numbers for an SSTU cluster, first of all, I'd have to make multiple clusters, and it's tough to figure out how to make multiple clusters when it's arranged like this. Uh, this is the only way I can figure out how to arrange 31 engines on a 9 meter stage while they are this diameter. If they're thinner, then that's easier, but I, I don't think they can get too much thinner than this. So it's like a honeycomb sort of thing. And if we take a look at the engines, I've got two configurations, an ITS configuration and a BFR configuration. 
and uh, these engine models I believe are from the KK Launchers uh, uh, ITS pack. So um, the BF, though I made the configurations for realism overall. Uh, so these are the numbers I'm working with, 356 vacuum ISP. I believe that is correct for the numbers they gave us in the 2017 presentation. And the, two, uh, the most recent presentation didn't uh, say anything about the numbers of the engines or I don't think they mentioned how much fuel is in the tanks. So I went with the 2017 numbers for now. Um, it'll depend on them to update stuff. So uh, the 2017 numbers was 1,100 tons of fuel in the BF, uh, BFS. And that translates to five minutes of fuel nearly exactly if what you've got on the stage is seven of the sea level engines. So we're going with seven sea level engines. Uh, they did mention that you can swap out the six outer ones for vacuum engines, but we're going with the six sea level ones uh, as a demonstration. And I put little boxes for extra cargo like they did. Altogether, the dry mass of the ship was supposed to be 85 tons, and we are at 89.8 tons for an assumed 4 tons, 4.8 tons of cargo relating to the 12 passengers. So I think that's reasonable, 4 tons of cargo. And uh, yep, uh, we've put little thrusters on the first stage, though I don't anticipate bringing the first stage back. I know you were wondering about that. Um, we'll work on that later. It's interesting, with the original ITS, they had the masses such that you couldn't use regular tanks. You had to use balloon tanks for everything uh, because their masses, oops, uh-oh, I better just reload this version. Okay, so what you saw there was the top uh, node of the procedural tank losing, uh, going away. It lost its top node, and so I couldn't attach it. And that sometimes happens with really large procedural tanks. I don't know why, but uh, the only solution is then to reload. So anyway, here we have it, and we have the right burn times. Um, so yeah, and correct mass, uh, 3,065 tons. Well, a little bit under mass, but I don't want to tweak the tank now because it's going to have problems. But like I said, uh, with the 2016 version, the ITS version, 12 meter diameter, uh, we had to use balloon tanks to make it work out and the engines were like at the theoretical limits for methane oxygen engines uh, so overall I prefer the 2017 numbers anyway because we are we get to use proper you know regular tanks in that uh, I think they would have to use anyway uh, and the numbers for the engines are more in the regular line of methane and oxygen rather than right at the limits so anyway, uh, here's what it is. Let's take it outside and see how it works. But uh, let's have uh, let's have Jeb and Fogas and maybe Madster. Madster is a good name. Uh, Worman Kerman. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Jeb, Fogas, Madster, and Worman. We'll just go with those four. Okay, well, if we're going to go to the moon, we should line up with the moon. Uh, that's just sensible. And uh, even though a free return, uh, not a free return, uh, even though an off-plane transfer can happen, um, it makes the free return more complicated to do an off-plane transfer. So we won't do that. Okay, uh, let's take a look inside. Can we look inside? I don't know if we can look inside at our kerbals. Uh, there they are. Uh, okay, we have our four kerbals there. Good times. Now, the obvious question is, with the big fins, uh, will this be stable? I mean, doesn't it need fins at the bottom? And the answer is no. The reason the answer is no is because the fins don't give any net lift. Uh, they're symmetrical. Uh, the body is symmetrical. There's, uh, I mean, these actually, these fins will give in that lift, but uh, because the other fins are sort of symmet symmetrically arrayed around the body, it's, it's not that much lift, and it doesn't really generate that much body lift either. So actually, uh, no fins at the bottom are necessary for this arrangement. 
Uh, the downside is, of course, uh, with it generating not much lift, it means that uh, re-entry is going to be a little bit harsher. But uh, that's why on the presentation they had the the BFS coming in like slamming into the airstream, basically uh, not not like a shuttle at forty degree angle, but at a much higher pitch. But uh, I do not know if I can even handle this during re-entry. We'll have to see. But let's get started. I don't know how far out we're gonna get. Uh, in theory, in the VAB, we seem to have enough delta V to get to the moon. Just enough, in fact, which is an interesting point all on its own. But uh, we actually have to see that in practice. So I do have a BFR script. And I did test it, but I haven't brought this to the moon. Okay, get ready for monumental lag. Uh, it's quite a delay. Well, it's doing better than it did uh, before, actually. Apparently, a clean restart to the system helps somewhat. But the up is about as good as you're gonna get, unless I can put all the engines on an SS or a series of SS2 cars, in which case we can reduce 31 to 3, for instance. Now I still have to do some fixing up of the textures at the top, so still some work to do on the model, and there are a lot of things I want to do with this. I. I Making a cargo version seems tough because it's an interesting sort of jaw hinge, right? I mean, it's got a jaw at the bottom that stays steady and then the top opens up. Uh, that's complicated. The reason for that is so that the opening of the thing doesn't get in the way of a possible payload. If you can imagine the top swinging open, uh, if you just had uh, this cone swinging on a hinge at the top, for instance, it would hit a payload that actually fills the entire area. So that's why the jaw being steady and only the top swing open helps. Though it does make clearing the payload a little bit more complicated. The script is told to reserve fuel on the first stage, 15 seconds of fuel, which translates to 8%. We'll switch to the first stage after it's separated to see how much delta V that equals out to. Technically with smoke screen I can up the particle count. 31 engines are rather constrained by 4,000 particles. If I go 40,000 particles we get more of a plume. It's not still a huge plume. Top out at about 17,000 particles. And of course it slows down things a bit. Not a huge amount. Actually smoke screen isn't too bad. I guess we'll leave it be. Uh, why don't we say 20,000? Another reason why the fins don't have much of a problem here is because they're fairly low down and swept back. But still, I mean, it seems to be handling very well, all things considered. We should have checked the center of lift in the VAB. It's an interesting fact about the design that the length of the first stage is only a little bit more than the length of the second stage, the BFS, even though it has about nearly three times the propellant. So the propellant is much denser here, and of course there's a lot of open space at the top here. It could be that the tanks, the empty tanks, are heavier than I think, and the front end is lighter, and that would help the center of mass situation on re-entry. We would be carrying some fuel back, and we're gonna get to that. We'll have to see whether we actually have enough fuel to land. 
Actually, I didn't even think about that in the VAB. I saw that we had enough to get to the moon, but, but not really enough to do a soft landing, to be honest, after we get back to Earth. Too used to planning the missions with parachute, you know, parachutes on a capsule after re-entry. Alright, getting ready for shutdown. It shuts down at 2 minutes and 45 seconds. I guess it didn't really light the next engine. So let's check uh, 3,890 meters per second there. All right, well, I'll take it myself then. Let's make sure that's clear. Uh, throttle up and uh, let's have SAS on ignition. Well, I guess I have some sort of problem with my KOS script. Not a huge surprise. Let's say that looks like a 20 degree pitch. Let's just execute that. Actually, uh, could we have this do a uh, roll safely? Not the best roll I've ever seen, but okay. I don't, I mean, it's it's a tight call whether 8% is enough to get it back to the Cape. And given a barge landing, maybe they can reserve less than 8%. And that would help out as far as the margins so that we can reserve enough fuel for a safe landing. As you can see, uh, the BFS has a copious amount of delta V, still 8,400 meters per second after burning for 50 seconds. In interesting, the swing back of the fins fits the cone of the exhaust pretty tightly. Again, these are the sea level engines, so. If it turns out we don't have enough fuel, one option is to swap them out for the vacuum engines. And in that case, we would get better efficiency on this. It might even help the center of mass thing, because I haven't actually got cargo in the back right now. And um, the vacuum engines are heavier than the sea level engines. I do wonder why the bottom of the ship is grayish silver. I don't know what kind of heat shielding would be grayish silver. I don't think the bottoms of the Dragon Capsule, that stuff is grayish silver, but... Well, just one of many questions. Yeah, even above 160 kilometers, it's still flickering like this, I don't know why. Maybe if I go to map view and come back. annoying. Good thing these engines throttle because uh, the thrust weight ratio at the end of this would be pretty high otherwise. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we're going to have enough. It'll be close. It'll be very close. Looking at it, uh, we might have 3,100 meters per second left, which, which is just enough for a uh, lunar flyby. So, something about this, I mean, I can't imagine they're budgeting less than 4 tons for the cargo, so that's probably not the problem here. Maybe they're going to fit the vacuum engines, or maybe they're going to land the uh, first stage on a barge, in which case they'll have a bit more margin to play with. Not sufficient. 189 by 160. Wonder if the flickering atmosphere is something that just. Uh, let me go back to the space center and come back. Um, oh, I should have managed our inclination with the moon a little bit better. 3,120 meters per second. Uh, there will be boil off from these tanks. Uh, you can see liquid oxygen in particular is currently boiling off. Liquid methane, not, interestingly. But uh, here, let me go to the tracking station and come back and see if the flickering's gone. 
Interestingly, out of all the icons it decided to pick for the BFS, it picked the rover icon, which is like the one thing it's not. Um, and I guess that's because of the landing leg assemblies that we've picked. Um, it decide, decided that those are rover landing leg assemblies, which I don't think is possible. But when you think about it, well, okay, it's not that much of a probe or debris. Uh, but it is a lander. It is a ship. It's sort of a station. Uh, it is a base, uh, you know, on Mars they intend to make it the base, right? Uh, it is, well, uh, calling it a space plane is a stretch, it's not really a relay. Uh, but yeah, uh, it, it's it's multiple things, but uh, rover it is not. Okay, I think the atmosphere is fixed. Um, one thing that's interesting to note is, uh, given the numbers in the 2017 presentation, and possibly with vacuum engines on here instead, um, this is very tightly budgeted for a flyby of the moon. Um, it really is. It's like, I mean, and of course, uh, Maezawa, the Japanese businessman who decided to book a flight, um, said that he had contributed a lot and uh, was planning on going on Falcon Heavy initially, but uh, uh, ended up uh, switching to BFR. And I wonder if his contributions to BFR ensured that uh, it had uh, the capability to go to the moon on a flyby on a single launch. I mean, it seems very tightly Delta V budgeted for that purpose. So that's an interesting thing to note. And yeah, let's uh, have Mechjeb uh, plot us uh, maneuver to the moon. And then I'll correct it as necessary. Well, 3120 and it wants 3137, but that's not going to be, uh, it always plots a crash course for the moon. So let's see what, uh, what a free return trajectory will give us. So, oh well, it looks like we have to burn more for a free return. There, there's that free return. Um, so we don't have quite enough. Let's see what we do have enough for. Well, like that, we can just barely make Lunar SOI. I suppose we can at least make that much come true on this initial flight. So, I mean, this is the first time I'm trying to get to the moon with this. I'll refine it a little bit better. And on the way back, what happens to us? I don't think it changes the orbit too much, does it? Anyway, we'll find out. Uh, so. I don't know, I, I, do I even see a periapsis here? Uh, yeah, okay, it gives, gives us a periapsis of 2,000 kilometers. I'm mean, sorry, 2 kilometers in 8 days. Okay. Well, we're not going to have any f extra fuel to control our attitude, so it's just going to be uh, a completely out of control sort of situation. But I guess it'll be instructive to see how it operates like that. Um, we are, we are going to have boil off in the hour and 20 minutes. We'll do our best. We'll see. Only 35 seconds of burn time for the translunar injection. Uh, we'll have to throttle down, of course. Okay. Well, we're not too far from the node. Let's get the solar panels out before I forget. Don't jettison anything. Jettisoning something might actually help the Delta V situation, but it's sort of cheating. So these are from a mod. Of course, I did not make the solar panels. Only thing I made was this front cone here. Which is easy. Okay, node. There's no reaction wheel in here. Um, I might want to reconsider that. And let's get caps lock on before activating the RCS. <laughs> Okay, uh, because caps, locks, caps lock is on, uh, you can't really see the RCS puffs is working. Even if, uh, I think they throw, uh, the ones I have here throw down to 20% thrust, but even then we're at 2 G's right now. The solar panels are recharging us appropriately, so that's nice. I mean, we could shut off some of the engines. We don't need all the engines for this burn. You know what? Let's let's reserve some. Let's try and bring it back down into the atmosphere. We're not going to hit the moon. We're a ways off. We actually need about 200 meters per second more there. 
But let's just see if we can bring it through the atmosphere a little bit and work with that part of the whole deal. Also check boil off, right? Look at the delta V ticking down because of boil off. Maybe I need to integrate some radiator technology into this tank because otherwise we're gonna lose everything. Uh, yeah, uh, we're not gonna, I tried to reserve delta V but we don't have any. Maybe I should have just gone for the free return. Yeah, uh, actually we're not in the atmosphere so I think we, we, we should, I mean, we want to check things out as much as possible. So I'll, just for this once, cheat. Uh, I don't know if it's going to work because I don't cheat very often. I don't know if turning on infinite propellant works when you have none. So, let's see. Um, it would seem like the answer is no. Well, more you know. So our four Kerbals are stranded in orbit. <laughs> uh, but uh, let's see, maybe we can change view to them? No, that, that's, that's one problem because they're not in an IVA situation. Um, we're gonna have full gas leave seat. Okay, now we can, okay, RCS. Uh, test internal RCS capabilities and collidering. So yes, uh, the collider works. Full gas cannot accidentally leave the spacecraft. It's important. I'll have to build in some sort of airlock or something. Right now they they can't go on EVA. Lots of work to do as far as this is concerned. So anyway, um, less of a video than I was planning. I, I was thinking we could at least swing by the moon, but got to work on the margins a bit. And, but I have to do it in such a way that it comports with the data that we have been given with SpaceX, so that's a little bit tricky. Though I don't know if they actually technically gave us the empty mass of the first stage, for instance. That's why I didn't know the burn time. And... And we could just fit the vacuum engines on the second stage, we'll see. So, uh, with that being our current status here, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.